Stay tuned for National Tractor Pullers Association, only on Rural TV. Home of Wisconsin is where we're coming to you from today. It's the Budweiser Wisconsin Dairyland NTPA Championship Pull, and today you're going to get to see the trucks you see every day run up and down the highway and byways. If you got it, a truck brought it, but I tell you what, these are some special trucks, aren't they? That they are, Army, and 20,000 pound super semis. It's the most heaviest. Uh, weight category we have on the NTPA circuit, and they produce a lot of power, diesel-powered engines, a lot of smoke, a lot of excitement. And, and, and it's a lot more than just brute horsepower, because these guys actually go in, they set their rear ends of the trucks, they get them down, they get bite and everything. You know, one of my favorite shows on TV is Trick My Truck. Yes. Okay, you watch it, well, everybody good... watches that. Well, I'm telling you, these guys have tricked these trucks to the max. Now, Ashley's down with them trying to find out what's going on. You want to go down to her and see what's happening? Absolutely. Ashley, what do you got for us today? That's right, Greg and Army. I'm in the pit area with the 20,000 pound super semi owned by Ray Aitken. This truck, if you notice over here, says it's powered by Cummins, but this is no normal Cummins, let me tell you. These guys can run up to four turbos and they push out a lot more power than anything you could imagine. Uh, it, although it looks just like something you might see on the street or on the road, just like a truck, you know, for any farm, this is not anything you're going to find on the on the highway at any given time. First man out is going to be Al Hopkins driving the Blue Ox. You know, it's kind of interesting. There's a lot of work that goes into these trucks. And Greg, 20,000 pounds of sleds, 40,000. The sled's got a heck of a time trying to stop these guys sometimes. Yeah, I'm sure the sled is weighted as heavy as it ever is for any division. And uh, you think of the unlimited modifieds, I'd say the weight is full here today in Toma. And Al Hopkins is from Greenville, Michigan. This is the Blue Ox, and uh, it's a 1982 Peterbilt 3408 Caterpillar engine. And I got to tell you, this was built from the ground up. It never saw the highway. John Bojack built it several years ago, and Greg Hibbets bought it uh, about three years ago, and uh, it's a very capable machine. Al was in the driver's seat for the first time when this truck debuted, and now uh, the three members of the Hibbets team each have a truck of their own. Purpose-built pulling truck. Let's see what it like. You're looking for the smoke to go black. When it goes black, it's a maximum horsepower. At that point, they'll roll off the clutch. We're getting close. Here it comes. First truck out, Blue Ox, big cat for horsepower. Oh! Wow. Safety crew right there on the spot. They knocked it, you see they bent something on the front. Something actually came out of the front. Like I said, they could run upwards of four turbochargers. Safety shield stopped everything. Uh, Al, first time out this year with the Blue Ox. Big bang, big fire, smoke. Tell us what happened. Uh, it looks like uh, blew the build enough pressure to build a header apart, uh, blew apart. So I'm not for sure. I guess I have to go back to the drawing board and build some better headers. This wasn't the interview I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, Al, if you can't be a winner, be spectacular. You was definitely that. Who's coming out now, Greg? Well, coming out next is Greg Hibbets in Hudsonville, Michigan's his home. And this is the prohibited. We've seen Greg uh, on our TV series many times. He has been a multi-time NTPA Grand National Super Semi Champion. And uh, he's sponsored by Michigan Cat, and Pico, Valley Truck, and uh, it's a W900 Kenworth and 3406B Caterpillar. So uh, another Kenworth coming out here. I hope you know what all those numbers you just said stand for. Right now, I'm just looking for 300 feet. Watch the smoke. Dialing in the horsepower turbos coming up. He's watching the gauges. He's kind of like watching a tennis match right now. He's bouncing back and forth between the gauges. When I get black, he's going to pull the trigger. We're almost there. We're there. Time to go. Time to 
take his load and go. That's a normal run for the Hibbets team. We got there early. Yeah, pass <laughs> three ten. Super run. It's got to make them feel better after that uh, last run by their teammates. Greg Hibbets. Boy, doesn't this look familiar. This is another one of the prohibited trucks coming out. This is Gary Raring. He's from Middleville, Michigan. He's a mechanic. And this is the prohibited two. Defending Grand National Champion from last year, a 3406E, 600 cat, four turbochargers, intercooled, and uh, sponsored by Valley Truck and Michigan Cat. He'll set that rear suspension. Those two big ankles on the back with eight wheels, believe me, he'll get that to set and squat. Put the horse bar right where Now, you got to remember, these guys are running a street design tire. There's no special modification to your tires here. These are regular street tires. DOT and, approved. Uh, yeah, DOT approved, and they'll get that rear suspension to set down. Horsepower's in the front. Stick the power at the back, and that's what they got to get working for them. Gary started out as a crew chief for his uh, nephew, Greg Hibbets, and this was the second truck they brought out, and then Al Hopkins, another teammate, uh, they brought out the Blue Ox, so it's bang, 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 Hibbets, Team one, two, and three here in our beginning at Super Semi class. Watch for the smoke. There it is. It's black and it's black. Mm -mm. Wow. Not a great start to 2008 for Team Hibbets. Definitely something let loose there. Still running, though. Gary, your last year's defending champ. We come out today. A big boom. Tell us what happened. Well, I'm not quite sure. We did do some changes on the truck and stuff like this, and uh, I believe a charger let go. But, you know, you can't win them all, and uh, I just, uh, we'll be back on track again. Greg, did that truck have a funny car type body on it that lifts up? Yes, it did, Army. More super semi action from Toma. Stay tuned. It's time to celebrate the very best of the harvest months at the Autumn Show and Game Fair this 3rd and 4th of October. Rural TV and the South of England Agricultural Society welcome you and your family to the magnificent country showground in picturesque Ardingly, where you'll enjoy lush seasonal produce from local growers, fine traditional crafts as well as remarkable vintage machinery and other heritage displays. Experience the thrilling equestrian demonstrations, pony club mounted games, fast paced terrier racing, falcons in full flight and clay pigeon shooting at one of the many competitions. You and your family will be embraced by the true spirit of the country as you join us for this exceptional autumn weekend. For more information visit www.ruraltv.tv or go to autumnshow.org.uk or to buy tickets simply call 01444 892 700. Join the Queen of Quilting as Rural TV presents Quilt in a Day. 29 years ago, Eleanor Burns introduced her first Quilt in a Day book, cultivating a quilt-making revolution by compacting months of work into one day. To date, she's authored over 75 books and her training techniques are being used throughout the world by thousands of instructors. Join Eleanor for Quilt in a Day, only on Rural TV. Always outdoors, never in the kitchen, that's cowboy flavor. Billy Ruiz, a master cowboy chef who used to cook for President Ronald Reagan, brings a lifetime of experience to the campfire. And his wife Sue, the Dutch oven diva, leads you step by step in preparing your own authentic Western cuisine. Rural TV is having a cookout and you're invited. Don't miss cowboy flavor only on Rural TV.
And now back to Greg Randall and Army Armstrong. Hey, welcome back to Toma, Wisconsin. Army Armstrong along with old Greg Randall here. And I tell you what, these big behemoths are really having to tap dance out there. And Hibbets, who we thought normally doesn't have a bit of problem, these guys are fighting an uphill battle right now, Greg. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's very uncommon for you to see one of his trucks have yeah. an explosion or technical difficulties to have two. You know, last year, Army, they won 17, one of the three Hibbets trucks, 17 out of the 19 hooks on the NTPA Super Semi Series. So to see those two have their problems and not make it down to the other end, very, very strange. Let me ask you this, because uh, Toma is normally the kickoff, first of the year because of the points and everything, exactly. you think it, it's got the new truck blues, they may have tried something over the winter that didn't work and uh, they may have to go back and change it, or, or is it too late in the season to do that, even after the first time? Because I know once these guys start pulling, Man, they pull almost every weekend. Yeah, and you know, when you have 17 wins last year over th your three-truck steed, you got to wonder how much farther up can you go. And, you know, it's that pushing of the envelope that can cause some of these problems. I'm sure they'll get it fixed. But right now, you know, Greg Hibbets is out there. He's definitely going to come back for the pull-off. There's still a couple trucks back there that's able to get the job done. And uh, we'll go back to the rest of the action. It looks like we're getting ready to go in the way. Ray Aiken rolls out here from Paris, Illinois. You know, Ashley opened our show here with uh, Ray's truck. This is the Just Passing Through Machine. It's a Cummins KTA 1150 cubic inch Kenworth W900. It was built in 1980, but believe me, it's gone through several modifications since uh, Ray brought this out on the circuit. You know, it's interesting because Ray, you can see him holding his hands up. That's a safety thing in this sport. It means he will not touch anything until he's told to do so while they hook the truck up. These guys are very diligently trying to keep these trucks as looking like regular trucks as possible. Notice the spoiler on the very front of that truck. Got the big horns across the top. Exhaust stacks in the same place. They want people to identify with these trucks. Yeah, it looks like he's got a sponsorship with Monsanto. And uh, Ray's one of those Illinois pullers, a uh, veteran. He's a farmer and a trucker by trade. He's looking to try to force a pull off with Greg Hibbets, who's already passed 310. Greg, I think he just ran out of gearing on that thing. Uh, you know, over the road trucks got all kind of gears. I think he may have just been in the wrong gear because he was still making horsepower and that thing stopped. Yeah, it didn't seem like he had the boost either, Army, to, to maybe pull the gear. Uh, uh, Ray will get back to the drawing board and be ready for another day. Speaking of boost, uh, you know, when you can run up to four turbos, as J.R. Collins does, now you talk about a showman. This guy, Man, he, he can go to the funeral and have people laughing in about 20 minutes. I'm serious. Well, when people talk about the birth of semi-pulling, you're this, going to yeah. bring J.R. Collins into the conversation very quickly. 1984 Max Superliner. It's a V8, 998 cubic inches, and as you mentioned, four turbocharger. He's from Painesville, Ohio. He and his wife, Linda, travel many miles over the course of the summer, taking the Buckeye Bulldog out, and uh, it's sponsored by R.W. Sidley right there in that Painesville, Ohio area. You know, he gave me some good advice about my wife. He said, Army, as long as you can keep these two phrases in mind, you're gonna be okay. The phrases are, yes, dear, yes, darling. Let's see what he can do here. <laughs> It, go. Must, it must work because Linda stayed with him. Yeah, you gotta love the mural there on the front of the grill there the, with the bulldog with the smoke coming out of its ears. First time, look at he got flames coming out of the exhaust. Quite a show. They're looking for <laughs> 310 to force the pull off here with Greg Hibbets. That makes two in our super semi class. Greg, I tell you, they really put a lot of time and energy and effort in it. They made a hard job easy with that, and I understand it really works well, too. Speaking yep. of working well for all you Dodge boys, look at here. Larry Carey coming out now. Now, you talk about another crowd favorite. He and Collins, wherever they go, they really put on a show. So let's see what's going to happen. Got that big Dodge Ram on the front of this thing. A lot of product loyalty by these guys, isn't it, Greg? Yeah, no question. Uh, Larry's from Morley, Michigan, and he's in the trucking and sand and gravel business. He likes to snowmobile up there in Morley, Michigan uh, when he's not pulling. Obviously, we're talking about a winter, 
wintertime vocation. It's a 1972 Dodge Bighorn called Dodge Fever. And his uh, crew is Edie, and she helps him most with the truck, and uh, she goes around with uh, Larry to the different events. The former Grand National Champion, this is also Cummins Power. Larry's watched these other fellows. He, he knows the characteristics of each of their trucks. Everybody knows the other guy's truck. He knows what they're doing. He knows how far they went. Let's see if he can figure it out. Now, something just happened. You notice the sun just now came out. That might just affect his run. Horsepower to block. He rolls to see what's going to happen. Larry Carey. distance he was looking for. He had the torque. The engine was turning over. Go to 293 with an 8, but I guarantee you he was looking for something better than that. Larry, it was a good pass. Looked great. D did it have something to do with the track? Maybe that you couldn't get that last seven feet out? Yeah, I know. I just, I lost traction right there at the end. It just didn't want to get a tight grip into the track. Yeah, I ran good. You know, I was happy with the pass, but I just, I didn't get her done. Stay tuned to come back for the pull-off and find out if it's going to be Greg Hibbets in the Prohibited or J.R. Collins in the Buckeye Bulldog. Hey, it's a Dairyland Nationals, man. This is a happening up here. we got two trucks in the pull-off, and the crowd's going to pull for the one they like. One blue, one red. That's right, and we've got the Ken Worth of Greg Hibbets coming out, going against the Mac of J.R. Collins. And, uh, First hook of the year for the Super Semis. All these guys are going to walk out with the points lead. They'll be bragging about it all summer long. The win here is a big win. Watch the smoke coming out. It'll tell the story. The chassis set in the rear. Horsepower's coming up on Turbo. There's four of them. He rolls the clutch to see what he can do. Another really stellar run there, 321 and 2 for the Hibbets team. Stellar doesn't tell what that run is. 321 on this track is awesome. Now, Collins comes out. He's got that 321 and the crosshairs on his windshield. He wants to go after. This is Mr. Showman. We saw him all ago flaming it up. But right now, it's not for grins and giggles, it's for the win. Anything over 321 and a six is going to make him the champion. Let's see what he can do. One thing I don't think you want to have happen if you're his competitors is to have him win at Toma, because you know this guy's going to be rubbing your nose in it all year long. Here come the flames. Watch the smoke. Collins will be going after him. We're going to find out right now. It's all down to this one last pass. He knew he was had the run. He just ran out of bounds. Yeah, hooked him to the right real hard, and he's not real happy about that. Uh, tough break for JR, but uh, second place in Toma. No, he's not happy at all. He knew he had to run to win this class. Maybe we can see it on the NTPA uh, replay cam here as he comes out of the hole. Looks like he's going pretty straight there, Army. Then all of a sudden, about right there, he starts hooking to the right, and it was all over with that heavy sled. JR, first off. I know that's disappointing. You've had this problem forever with this truck. It wants to turn on you, and you've tried everything. Do you have any idea what, what you can do to get this, get this truck to run straight? Because when it does, it's going to be a bad boy. Did you see what it did the first hook? It went the other way. I almost went out of bounds over there, and then I don't understand it. I moved the sled about three feet this way to compensate for what was happening over there, and I compensated all right. You'd think I knew what I was doing after 22 years, but uh, we'll get it sooner or later. Well, 240 feet, it made a direct right turn. It's just oh, unbelievable. Yeah. And it was on its way. I mean, I think I could have got out here with him. I'm, I'm sure I could have, but I mean, because I was really moving when I let off on it, but that's that's pulling. I mean, you got to stay within within the boundaries. Oh, Ralph Benner told me one time, if it wasn't for the chalk lines, that track would be a mile wide. <laughs> Well, the winning number's always one, and that's all it took for Hibbert to win this thing. He brought three bullets in here, but the, 
the, the one truck that he was working with took the win for that first place. I wonder what's going to happen with the rest of the trucks. This class looks like it's really ready to go this season on the NTPA circuit. No doubt about it. You know, Greg defeated your old buddy, J.R. Yeah. Collins. <laughs> J.R. still has a problem keeping the truck going straight. I'm sure he's scratching his head. Greg Hibbets, on the other hand, he's got to be jubilant in the fact that he won the class, but he's got to be wondering about Uncle Gary and Al Hopkins' trucks. Both of those kind of went up in a blaze of glory, as you might say, but uh, Greg's got to be happy. And let's see what he has to say. He's down there with Ashley now, trackside. Take it away, Ashley. Greg, 321 in the pull-off. When I talked to you a little bit ago, you weren't sure, thought it might hold up, but you didn't know for sure. Tell me about this, about the feeling of winning tonight or today. Well, obviously, Ashley, when you're here at a great event like Toma, you know, finishing the top three is always uh, an accomplishment. So winning is just a little bit of, uh, you know, a little extra. So, um, you know, very, uh, very gracious to my crew. Uh, we worked really hard on my other two trucks. And to be honest, this one only got an oil change since last year. So maybe uh, we put too much energy in the other ones they broke. We should have left them alone. But uh, this old truck, you know, it's been around a long time and it just does the same thing every time. So it's it's a good old truck.